Uh, good morning and good evening. Uh, I am Dr. P.Y. Cho, and today we are so happy to have the 84th the ICC webinar uh, since the four years ago. We are so happy to invite our presenter today is the Professor Chalong Pong, and the two important the panelists are invited to come for the panel discussions. One is Professor Honda from Japan, and the other one is a Professor Tasu Oh from the Asa Medical Center, Korea. Uh, in the very beginning, I would like to invite Professor Chalong Pong, the student, Dr. Isara, to come give the Professor Chalong Pong a short introduction. So, Dr. Isara, please, thank you for your introduction. Thank you very much, Dr. Joe. Hello and good evening, Professor, colleagues, and all of the ICC audience. My name is Isra Lim Tanakun. I am a previous international fellow in Cranial Facial Center at Changan Memorial Hospital. Today, this is my great honor to be here and providing me with the opportunity to introduce Professor Shalom Pong Shat Dok Mai Prai to everyone, who is my directly teacher and also an inspiring surgeon in the field of the craniofacial surgery, not only to myself, but also to the young and junior generations in Thailand as well. Professor Shalom Pong is currently held in the position of Associate Professor and Chief of Departments of Surgery at Rama Thibadi Hospital, Mahidon University in Bangkok, Thailand. Professor earned his medical degree from Faculties of Medicine, Siri Rad Hospital, Mahidon University in 1991, and completed his residency training in plastic and reconstructive surgery in 1997. Professor further advanced his expertise through the specialized fellowship, including plastic and reconstructive surgery at Plastic Surgery Associate, Jackson, Mississippi, United States in 1998, and Craniofacial Surgery at Royal Children's Hospital in Melbourne, Australia in, in 2005. In addition to his clinical leadership, Professor Shilong Pong has been an active member and committee participants in several society within Thailand and international society and also widely recognized as a speaker on topic related to clip surgery, FEEM, and cranial synostosis from Thailand. Recently, Professor Shilom Pong served as the president of the Thai Clip and Craniofacial Association, which demonstrating his commitment to advancing craniofacial surgery in Thailand. So please welcome Professor to share the experience about the clip care with us tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kitty. Thank you, Thank you. Um, Isara. So <laughs> um, for a very, very kind uh, introduction, uh, before I share my experience, I have to share my slide first, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Already shared. Professor, you can uh, to put in the whole screen. All right. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so um it is very good to to see the very uh, familiar faces. And uh, for the uh so today we have the two panelists, very experienced panelists and and hopefully my talk will get uh, some some knowledge and some usefulness for the audience. So my talk is about um 30 to 40 minutes uh, with the topics of um, Thailand experiences in CREF care. So in terms of CREF care, everyone will know that it's not only the surgery, it's also many, many things, orthodontic treatment, speech therapy, uh, hearing, audiologist, and, and, and even the nurses who take you know, very important roles in uh, get uh, give the parents, the upset parents uh, for the information, for the whole information. So it's very um, quite a um, multidisciplinary uh, team to involve in the care. 
So I come from Bangkok, Thailand. So actually, it's not so many cases as the northeastern part of Thailand. That is um quite good number in craft care or craft patient new cases of craft patients, but we still have uh, any 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 diseases related to craniofacial deformity such as FEM and craniosynostosis as the Isra mentions. So my talk will cover the cleft lip and nose repair, primary and secondary and cleft palate repair, including primary and VPI collection, and I will cleft repair and get the conclusion. So the protocol of um, cleft reconstruction in Thailand is uh, quite established from the consensus on in uh, our meeting uh, two or three years ago. Uh, so mostly when we get the diagnosis of the cleft, it may be uh, Prenatally, that means the patient, uh, the, the mother still get pregnant and not deliver the baby yet, but they they get the information by other side. This is quite um, you know uh, high technology in in this era. Uh, so the the OB doctor can diagnose the cleft palate or the cleft lip since uh, is still in the warm. So we may get a consulting, a counseling or consultation uh, for the mother or for the parents. Uh, we are at at last, maybe the, you know, in first first two or uh, two or three years of life of the baby cleft, we give the information for the parents, and sometimes everyone knows we get the parents that get upset and sad and crying. Even they know before that they have a fifth baby. And we will go through the whole things. That is, we not only just cope with the surgery and the treatment, we also cope with the growth and development is, and is uh, less predictable result. And then if we decide to do the nasal aura molding, uh, we can send the, uh, the baby in the first week to the orthodontist to make the, you know, the cast and, and study and, and, and the template to develop the nasal aura molding. And uh, if the parents decide to do now the molding, they need to know that it's quite burdened, then they may need to come to the hospital more often than usual than non nam patients. And it may delay the lip repair surgically as well because the, the NAM has uh, uh, take time to work. So we will repair the lip repair and, and, and nasal repair primarily in first uh, three to six months of age. And then uh, the protocol, it may do the pilot repair and meningotomy at the age of 10 to 15 months old. But uh, personally, I prefer to do a bit older. That means um, like uh, when the kids pass 12 months of age, I will offer the parents to get the, the kids uh, pilot repaired because I think the older is easier and, and it less um, disturbance on the jaw growth as well. And then after we repair the, the palate and myringotomy by ENT doctors, is most, most of the patients require the myringotomy. Uh, we we'll follow up uh, and, and, and take to them, you know, get, get the parents to, to wait for the, the final result that we're gonna know the final result in next two or three years, not immediately for the scar maturing for the speech development and, and clear clearing of the speaking. And if required, we may we may require the secondary nasal repair at the preschool age, the six years old. That I prefer to do, you know, uh, as or as possible because the, 
the the soft bone around cartilage is is getting stronger with age and wing and 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 to do the surgery on the kids below six years of age is not easy for the cooperation of the kids. So when the kids getting more corporate, uh, it will be easier in terms of surgery and post of care. And then we go to the speech therapist to 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 evaluate the velopharyngeal sphincter function, speaking, and uh, uh, articulation. And go to the the the, the, the authentic treatment uh, since um, the 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 permanent teeth eruption, but you know they need to get get to the line of treatment. So the bone graft for the alveolar cleft, it will do the surgery at the age around nine to eleven years of age, and continue authentic treatment. This is the protocol for the cleft reconstruction in Thailand that we agree together to be the consensus. But the, uh, for the detail, it may be different from the individual surgeons. So the population statistic in Thailand is we, we got the birth rate about seven per 1,000 a year. And, and so we, we will have the, the new cleft cases, about 800 cases a year. Uh, so we go through the the lip repair. The lip repair in Thailand, uh, some patients has nasal oral molding, some patients not. Uh, it depends on the, the the how how the kids uh, can reach that kind of a uh, facility of treatment, because sometimes it's very difficult for the parents to bring the kid to the hospital that have a uh, facility to to do the nasal oral molding. So when you can see when the, the baby cry, the baby cry, the cleft is getting wider. All right, but uh, with without the taping, the cleft will get wider, wider, and make the surgery more difficult. And the molding, nasal outer molding, that's composed of the palatal plate and nasal holes, uh, will not obstruct the feeding activity. Even better feeding with the bottle and nipple, soft nipple. So um, when we describe the nasal deformity is unilateral clefian palate is completely different uh, compared to the bilateral cleft. The deformity is not only the, the base, the ELA base is also the dome and the um, midline structure, that is columella and the septum as well. So in the, the ELA base displays outward, that means laterally, caudally, and posteriorly. And the dome, the ELA dome, it get depression and sometimes it get notching. And skin envelope as, as well, the crease, the ELA crease may be not symmetric. That's the thing that we need to reconstruct, to restore, to get the normal position. With the NAM, the NAM will affect on nose, lip, and alveolus unilateral in terms of um, they will um, getting more alignment, better alignment of the alveolar cleft, get the gap smaller, make the surgery easier. And the most important things, in my opinion, is the, to push the dome up, the dome of the, the cleft side of the nostril up which is very difficult for, for me to, to do the surgery primary to get the dome uh, better level comparing to the normal size. So the vector of the NAM, it will uh, get the better alignment of the ELA base, ELA dome, and alveolar process of the maxilla and get the gap smaller with the taping as well. But not in every case that can afford the name, especially for the kid that uh, 
bring the kids to the hospital to be uh, older than you know one month old because uh, after one month old it's very it will be difficult to for the kids and the parents to apply the name on because the kid getting older and they refuse and sometimes they use their tongue to protrude the the name out of the mouth so it's it's very difficult so if we do the name we prefer to do the name in first two weeks of life sometimes the kids from from uh, overseas bring the kid into the thailand is getting very old i mean so um, after one month we call all for the name so uh, we not offer for the name we will go to the no name protocol which is quite similar to the name but a little bit different in terms of doing for the nasal dome. So the no name group, you can see the dome is very depression comparing to the to the name in in in, in the next next slide. This is no the no name group. The dome still not be corrected by name. And even on name on the no name group, I will go to the. The, the the inside the columella get to the septum, free up the septum from the caudal part from the endonasal spine and 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 warmer, and centralize it into the midline if possible. But not in every case is possible. So in, uh, I, I think this plans will be very close and very easy to achieve the center for the septum, the caudal septum. And we also correct have to correct the, the line, the crease of the LR to make it more symmetrical in, um, because sometimes the crease is very low. So the create the new crease, we require the cutting stitches and with the cutting stitches we can make the 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 the, the concavity of the nostril inside as well so i will show you the um, how the septum the the, cent the centralized septum is uh, affects on the lateral nasal side wall when we push to the midline when we detach it and we dissect it uh, suppressively uh, we will get the fuller of the lateral nasal side wall. We put, uh, when we put a uh, hook, the detector off, and we move the septum, the free septum. So we can see the, the, the lateral side wall of the cleft side getting more fuller and, and correct the C shape of the nasal, nasal bridge to make it straight. straight. When we move the septum, you can see the movement at the lateral nasal side wall, which is depressed as well. So I think this is the good opportunity to, to correct the septum because it's so cross with the repair incision. But in even in in the uh, no name cases, sometimes it's, uh, the the dome is not satisfying, so we may need um, uh, the secondary rhinoplasty at the age of six seven years old at the preschool age before the kids get to the 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 the, the real school in the grade one. And they get the the social uh, development that can have the, uh, the 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 effect to their their own personalities. The same thing. This is the the other big boy. So they go to Thailand at four months of age. So there's no chance to get them, but we still be able to correct the nasal dome by dissecting through the. The, the the lower lateral cartilage to make the dome 
push the dome up by filling the lower lateral cartilage and and reposition it and fix it to the contralateral lower lateral cartilage. So the NAM and no NAM is 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 maybe a different in terms of dome correction because in the in the cases of NAM group, uh, we 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 have um no necessary to get into the the lower lateral cartilage to get the dome elevation, but the no NAM group we have to go, uh up to the lower lateral cartilage to free up the lower lateral cartilage from the skin and crease and to reposition the lower lateral cartilage in the primary rhinoplasty. For the secondary rhinoplasty, we, I prefer to do the open tip rhinoplasty incision, free lower lateral cartilage, reposition and fixation lower lateral cartilage to upward lateral cartilage, upward and contralateral lower lateral cartilage. So it's like a uh, two direction, fixed to the upper lateral cartilage and fixed to the contralateral lower lateral cartilage with the, sometimes we need to fix the lip scar division as well in terms of the uh, scar is not satisfied. So in the no, no septum correct, no septum correction in the uh, primary na nasal repair, we still, notice the C shape of nasal bridge deformity. So we need to go to the correct, to correct the, the, uh, the septum, the septum. And, and sometimes we go, uh, to, and, 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 and reposition the lower lateral cartilage as well. But we need to define the problem that is the, the deformities, the remaining deformity is septum or lateral cartilage or uh, floor or the columella. So not every case has the same problem. So we need to uh, define the problem and correct uh, differently. In this case, it's 18 years old, primary repair from another hospital and, and, and still have the scar and, and, and nose still not perfect. So we need to go to open rhinoplasty. So uh, in terms of uh, uh, scar revision, it may be as easy as the, the doing, performing the incomplete cleft lip, but uh, we need to uh, preserve the skin. Otherwise, it may be have the horizontal shortage of the upper lip because uh, when we do the scar revision, we need to cut the scar out, especially for the bilateral cleft lip that we will talk later. In this case, it's come from uh, other countries and, and have the uh, incomplete cleft lip, never been repaired. So we do the, the lip repair and nasal repair at the same time. Uh, sometimes we need to do the costochondral cantilever graft uh, by using costochondral graft and, and, and put the, the shield graft on the tip to make the tip more uh, better definition. So name and, and no name is is a little bit uh, different in terms of the uh, the the surgery and the timing of the surgery for correction, but um, uh, especially for the uh, the the ELA dome part. But the final result, I think, um, for my for my opinion, I think it's not much differences. But it's a different story in bilateral clear flip because I, I think the bilateral clear flip, the name is very useful. How useful because um, the bilateral clear flip, if complete, if complete in, in a complete uh, bilateral clear flip and clear palette, they will got quite deformity on protrusion of the premaxilla and shortening of the columella. So NAM is take you know, more advantage on on the uh, push the dome up and push the premaxilla down with this different direction of the vector make the, the longer columella. If we just push the dome up, 
pre maxilla will get more protrusion if we push the 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 pre maxilla down the dome will get more depression so we need to get a different vector so with 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 this different direction of the name push the dome up and push the pre maxilla down we get the the pre uh polymella longer that's what we need the force of opposite vectors. This is the the quite the very early version of the NAM in our hospital, so it's quite robust looking. It's getting slimmer. That's just what I talk about. That is uh, opposite force of the pushing up and pushing down will make the the cornea longer. And if the premaxilla down and get the better alignment comparing to the lateral segment of the of the alveolus, it will make the, the cleft lip easier to repair because it's less tension. But uh, in most every case, um, if you have some shortage of the horizontal tissue of the upper lip, comparing to the lower lip. So the proportion is, is distorted. So the kids will have the, 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 the lower lip protrusion relatively to the upper lip. That's required the, the authentic, authentic treatment later. So um, I prefer to do this, uh, to, to, to put uh, the nasal stent in every cases of the bilateral cleft lip repair for five to seven days. Why? Because um, in mostly in the bilateral cleft, when, when I repair the cleft lip, the kids will have a problem with, with the nasal blocking because when, when the dome get the same, the same level, but the floor get higher, the lumen, the, the lumen of the nostril will get smaller. And with the swelling, when the lumen of the nostril gets smaller, the airways blockage and the kisses will be really um, uh, retard uh, recovery in terms of uh, sucking bottle of the milk and, and eating through the mouth. Because um, when the kids suck the, the milk from the bottle, they need uh, nasal, nasal breathing. So that's, that's why I put the nasal stand which which are the, the uh, selective sheet and with one stitches, with one or two stitches. And when we remove, we just cut stitch and, and pull this out without any uh, necessary to get the, the kids to the general, general anesthesia. So we can uh, remove it uh, at the outpatient department and get the you know quicker recovery. And I also uh, use the stitches that is um, for for the skin stitches. Use them seven O Y Q, which is double arm seven O Y Q, and put on with the uh, the, the medical glue, the surgical glue uh, to cover the wound. And after seven to ten days, when the glue come off. If you pull the 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 white pill off together, so it's no need to get the patients back to the, the OR to remove stitches under general anesthesia. And the other uh, advantage of the glue is uh, it, it waterproof can protect the wound from from the mucus and the content of the food, so the wound will will get very clean. And then, if affordable, the kids can have the uh, the, the nasal stem to retain the, the the nostril size and shape. So my stitches will be the five O PDS for muscle repair and cartilage reposition, and five O monocryl, seven O Y-cryl, and oxyacinoacrylate for skin uh, skin skin coverage. 
for the second rhinoplasty for the the bilateral cleft is uh, uh we also have to cope with the the short polymela and we open up and sometimes get get the like the the expansion of the columella with the costochondral. This is by um, uh, plenty of cartilage. So the bilateral cleft and cleft palate, uh, the septum, no need to to be touched to be touched in majority because the is already centered. But uh, the, 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 we, we, we have to deal with the uh, shortening columella, which the NAMs can, can improve it. And uh, the, the, the stretching with the uh, causal cartilage can expand and extend the shortening of the columella. So the, the conclusion for the NAM for the nasal outer molding for lip and nose repair. NAM or no NAM requiring just different primary cleft lip nasal collection, especially for the dome part. Nasal outer molding is more advantageous in bilateral cleft lip nasal deformities compared to the unilateral cleft lip deformities, especially for the columella. And sometimes we get the rare cases of cleft like median cleft or the cleft in, in the midline. This is uh, can associated with the other deformities for the midline, heart or brain or anything in the midline. But the same concept, we have to repair muscle with a good scar. And then go to the cleft palate repair. As I told you, this is I prefer to do it as soon as possible, just before the speech development. So if the cases that have delayed development already, we don't need. I do not need to to repair as protocol. For example, the kids as cannot stand, cannot walk at the age of twelve months. I may delay the cleft palate repair to get a bit older, easier, and more and uh, less disturbance to the jaw, the upper jaw. So we concern development age, not chronological age, except some, some cases that uh, have airway compromise, for example, barrel bank sequence, uh, small jaw, small lower jaw. We, I always delay, uh, repairing the palate because it's, it, it, it can cause the, the, the repair palate in the small mouth, it can cause upper airway obstruction and little consequences. And, and, and um, so we, we try to make uh, it safe for, for breathing rather than good speech. But if possible, we can, go to the, the mandible distraction to get um, um, bigger mandible, wider oral cavity, so the palate repair will get a better result. And also screening for this media and myogonomy is required for the speech. As you know, the speech, good speech is not only palate, it's also the hearing, the brain, and the you know, teaching as well. So the clear palette can be, you know, two frap or furrow, protoplasty, C plastic, anything. Bilateral, oh, I'm sorry, submucosal clear palette. So the main is uh, uh, for my practice is clear palette repair. I do the muscle repair uh, and and try to make uh, 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 the, the SOS possible, but have to be for the speech. Speech development is mostly is occur about uh, fifteen to eighteen months of age, and then we we will evaluate the the speech. Ah, uh, when the day, uh, when 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 the kids uh, get cooperate very well to 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 the examination, 
So we do ex oral inter-oral examination, speech perception, video fluoroscopy, nasal endoscopy, and nasometry. Nasal endoscopy is very difficult to to perform in the kids at the preschool age because the is no no cooperation at at this age of the kids. So mostly we do not and 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 it's, it's not myself that can do the nasal endoscopy. We have to uh, consult the ENT surgeon to do nasal endoscopy. So I prefer not to do nasal endoscopy to be included in evaluation of the speech uh, pathology. So uh, as you know, this virophringeal dysfunction, it can be insufficient in terms of structure or amount, or it can be no movement or incompetent. So if the kids come to us in the, uh, with the hypernasality in repair care palette, we need to exam it caused by oral of fistula or VPI or both. So we go to the oral speech examination with very subjectively. So we try to make it, you know, more objective, more objectively, more measurable with the scoring system, nasology, nasal emission phonation, facial grimace, articulation, but uh, from my opinion, uh, nasality and nasal emission is very is, is the most important, it's essentially uh, nasality because the phonation, the kids can be hoarseness, we, it, it can have the facial grimace, it can be, have the disarticulation. Secondly, consequences from the hypernasality. So when we correct the hypernasality, the kids still have Phonation abnormalities, they still have hoarseness, still have facial grimace, we still have this articulation that needs need to be rehabilitated by, by speech therapist. So the, the correction of the VVI is, is not just the surgery, it's also the, the speech therapy as well. So video video fluoroscopy speech therapy is, is quite useful because the kid can can cooperate. They cannot, they may be not be able to read, but they, they can follow the words by the parents or, or the doctor, but it cannot identify uh, the type of the, the pot of the uh, video finding your sphincter insufficiency. We use nasometry, uh, let the kids uh, talk uh, through the, the passage, especially the, the particular passages to get the, the proportion of the nasal voice to the oral voice uh, in the oral passages. So uh, it, it can have the percentage and, and, and give us the severity of the hypernasality. So in, in this case, if we do the, uh, the, the, the secondary uh, platoplasty, you can see that we may need to to uh, realign the V-shaped muscle, levator muscle, to be more horizontal. By dissecting free from, free from nasal mucosa or a deep structure. I'm sorry. And after we get the, the, the good dissection, we can suture in the midline to get, you know, better alignment. But uh, from my experience, I think the straight line repair will get contraction, not only the lip, but also palate. So I prefer to do uh, some kind of, of, of small C plus on the palate as well to break the straight line to get less contraction. So uh, the, the conclusion in, in my secondary part of passing, adequate muscle dissection, repair, reposition, lateral position uh, to restoring the VV function. Plural part of provide not only the non-straight line repair, but also overlapping the part of muscle as well. So it's tighter comparing to the repair in, in the midline, but uh, 
uh, it, it it may not be able to do in every cases. If we do some, in some cases, we need to relax the the lateral part as well. So and 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 I I think the the most important thing for for the second repair that uh, can uh, determine the technique of the secondary pathoplasty is the the age and severity of their speech. So it can be in intravilla if if the kids uh young enough, or it can be extra villa if the kid is not young enough. So um I will get the 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 line about eight to ten years of age to define that the, the their palate is trainable or not. Because the eight to 10 years of age um, is getting older and the kids is very difficult to train, to use the, the palate. And, and eight to 10 years, if we do the exavilla collection, the follicle, the, the follicular phase is get less solute. The adenoid, the tonsil is getting smaller. So it's, it costs snarling less and and this is uh make the surgery become easier. So if the kid is small, we prefer to do intravilla repair. If the kid is getting old and severe, we can we prefer to do the exavilla repair. This is pharyngeal flap or sphincter pharyngoplasty or use a speech F. For the bone graph, um, uh, we also stress stress out, make the highlight that this is the part of automatic treatment. That means um, uh, the timing is very important. Is um, we try we we will send the kids to the pre pre bone graph treatment by try to alignment try to align the the alveolar fragment to make it better alignment. And then they'll do the bone graph and then do the post op alternative treatment. So the ideal age is about uh, eight, eight to nine years of age uh, before the canine root eruption. And the canine root is, is already formed. So got, um, we will uh, take the bone graft from the iliac crest, cancerous bone graft to put in the cleft and and get uh, the teeth movement to use the, the bone graft part as the soil to get the, the bone graft taken and stronger and thicker. So the, the, the timing, I think the timing is, is very important. Too early, the, the bone graft get resolved. Too late, the canine get resolved. And then um, automatic surgery when finished growth. If not finished growth, I prefer to do the, the distraction. If finished growth, prefer to uh, prefer to do the definite treatment. So quite the big team collaboration of the multidisciplinary team. So in some cases of mandibular hypoplasia, pierre bank sequence, and we if we do the, the surgery on the mandible, we will do the under indication, different indication. If we do the surgery uh, below age of two years, uh, that means that we will take care about the airway or we can avoid the tracheotomy or prolong uh, endotracheal tube by doing the newborn uh, mandible distraction. So uh, the mandible distraction will get the mandible longer anteriorly and get the oral cavity bigger and the airway bigger with the, the tongue was pulled together with the anterior mandible. And with this maneuver, the kids can discharge the endotracheal tube or the tracheosomy, which is the uh, very cr uh, critical for the parents. So in some cases, um, like in on the left side, 
this is the the cliff on the left and do the the jaw advancement by using this fraction and for the right side is not the cliff but this is left for three for the uh Apple syndrome For the whole process, we will connect it with the family about 18 years each. So my experience is I will spend time for all viewing all treatments over and over. Sometimes we need to have the written document for the parents to read because sometimes they cannot um, remember the whole process. And if possible, we display the, our treatment by uh, using the photo and let the, let the parents spend some time with group of deaf parents. It will be good, but uh, still uh, sometimes the social media, social media is too dangerous to, to get the misunderstanding. Some hospital that is not, no facility of nasal molding, uh, the parents can blame that hospital as the, you know, not, not complete as a protocol, so we not get them into the our national protocol. And uh, we need to explain the whole family, not only the father and mother, and also grandfather, grandmother, uncle, sister, everyone, because it's very difficult for the father and, and mother to, to hold the, the message or information to their grandparents. And we cannot play the single leadership role. It takes turns, right? For the six years of age, the speech service will be the, the leader. And then the 10 years, 11 years of age, the authorities will be the leader. And sometimes it's too stressed out for the family, the kid crying. So we, I prefer not to explain with while the kid, the baby crying, crying. They cannot concentrate. Even myself cannot concentrate on give the information. And sometimes we use the time too much to explain about the far future. And the parents cannot remember the near future treatment. So we need to get the conclusion for the first years of treatment. So my last slide information summary. That is the cleft lip repair. We repair the muscle, orbital lip muscle reconstruction with the good scar. But the cleft lip repair, we not care much about the good scar. We, so, but we still have to have the very good reconstruction of the muscle with the least jaw growth disturbances related to the, the age of the kids and the severity at the beginning. For the avular cleft repair, the timing of the bone graft and the pre and post outer bone graft is very crucial because if we repair too early, it may be least option. If we, repair, if we repair too late, it will be the canine loss. So the timing, the cooperation between uh, the surgeon and and the authentic, the, the authentic is very important. So that's all my presentation. So next two years, see you in Bangkok, APC, 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 and Thai Cave Conference. I got uh, this from Professor Lo last year. Okay. Okay, so that's all. Thank you very much. Any question? Thank you, or Professor. Anything? Yeah, thank you, Professor Charampont, for uh, you uh, bringing the Thailand experience uh, to treat the patient with CLEP and the topics involved the CLEP lip repair, poly repair and the compare, compare the name impact for UCLP, BCLP, VPI and the aviator bone graft. Thank you so much. And now we are going to the panel discussion. Uh, the first one, I would like to invite Professor Tasu O. Uh, please let uh, Professor O to give you a comment and uh, your question to Professor Charlon Paul. Yeah, yeah, please, Dr. O. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, Professor Charlon Paul, uh, thank you for sharing your 
very precious and very comprehensive craft here in Thailand. So I was very impressed that uh, your uh, protocol for craft lip and palliation care is very uh, comprehensive. And especially the, for the craft lip patient, uh, doing the very, uh, when you do craft lip repair in primary, you, I think that you are doing the primary rhinoplasty simultaneously when you craft lip repair. So, and the, the result is so amazing, so amazing. And especially for the lip curl was so amazing. And, and I was also, also impressed that even though, I think that, uh, uh, last week, I attended the Japanese uh, plastic surgeon meeting, and there there was invited an international session, and there is one. I'm sorry about that. I didn't uh, especially the remember the name from the Thailand uh, plastic surgeon, but uh, he he showed that uh, there are many patients that who cannot. Uh, afford uh, to take a damn free name before clap lip surgery in Thailand that uh, even though the patient without uh, pre name the surgical result was amazing so I was very impressed and I have many uh, many questions to ask you and I would like to the first question is that uh, when you do clap lip repair who the patient who did not the pre nam before clap lip repair, do you use different clap lip technique? And which part do you uh, focus when you do pre nam between pre nam patient and and without pre nam patient? That is my first question. Yeah. Um. So um, the question is um, how different between the mm. name and and mm. no name, yeah. In part of lip repair, right? Yeah. Do you do you use uh, any different technique, and uh, between that two category of patients? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, for the lip part, um, is quite no difference. Be honest about the the, the lip part. I also approx uh, free up. The, the muscle extensively, especially for, for the bilateral. Uh, and the approximate in the, uh, as much as possible, and do the scar or the filtrum in the unilateral with the triangular flap, small triangular flap. And for the, for the bilateral, we do the, you know, pro, uh, prolabium flap up. It will uh, raise the flap up and approximate the mucosa and the muscle using the lateral segment of of the lateral uh, of of the skin and vermilion to be the new the new filtrum the new tubercle of the midline of the lip. So quite the same things, but oh. the difference for the for the name and no name is will be the nasal part, especially for the dome. The lateral part, the the DLR base is quite the same, but so 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 it's deep, uh, the same things, but easier if if you use the the name because it's less tension. So this is my answer. Uh, especially so what, for my... uh, what what do you think? What do you think? Mm. And for my experience, fortunately, uh, for almost two of my patients. Uh, has the opportunity to get pre name, but sometimes uh, there is some patient that uh, who cannot um, uh, apply the, cannot be applied the name pre name before surgery. But the result was different that uh, when I apply the same technique, especially for the major ala base, uh, if I repair with the same uh, level of the uh, ala base, so the pre name, uh, the without name patient has some more major ala drift and downward drift compared with the 
patient with a pre name. So uh, I think that if I have another patient to who did not pre name, I it's better to more over correction for the major ala base compared with the pre name patients that that. So I want to ask to do you have any <laughs> that part this part. <laughs> Uh, um, we should be more overcorrect for the patient. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not overcorrect for the lateral or ELA base because uh, when I overcorrect to put in me immediately, is it never spring out. Comparing to the dome, the dome is 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 more or less it will collapse a bit. Uh, compared to the first first uh first repair, it will collapse, but the lateral part. Ela base of the lateral part or Ela base, I need to free up from from the periform and uh, reposition. And so with name or no name, I never do the overcorrect for the lateral part oh. or the base, but I do overcorrect for the dome. Oh. This is this is my my experience, but it's maybe different opinion. And I have many things to ask more, but maybe there are another panel. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Maybe later we can return back to Professor O. Yeah. And the second panelist is the Professor Hunter. And uh, Professor Hunter, please. Okay. Um, thank you, Professor. Uh, yeah about the uh, compre comprehensive management for the crest patients. Um, I also have a, a question regarding the numb procedure. Uh, in your patient uh, population, how many uh, percentage of the patient uh, choose the numb procedure for a unilateral case? I think it's different from the location in Thailand. But the uh, indra mm -hmm. activity in my hospital is over over half. I mean, over fifty percent that use the pre op pre name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the um the the question is about the you 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 said that the you have postponed the for the primary repair for the num cases because the the num effectiveness uh is uh more uh, late for the surgery, and what is the uh, end point of the NAM procedure for uh, the surgery. Do you have any criteria for to go to the surgery? Oh, that's, that's a very good question. Um, when we do the NAM, actually we not compress the protrusion much. We just allow the space for the growing of the dep depression part. So we, we, we need some time to get the good alignment. The alignment that we require is two things for the unilateral is the alveolar alignment. Mm -hmm. Have to be U-shaped as much as possible and the dome of the ELA. For, mm -hmm. the, for the dome of the ELA, we try to compare with the normal part. So the final, final that is oh, we ready to do the lip repair is the dome of the LR. When we take the name off, it's over correct by name, mm -hmm. higher than the normal dome of the contralateral nostril. But the for the alignment of the the alveolus, it's never been get the U shape, the good U shape in every case. It just make the better alignment that means the the height of the major and uh, minor segment is getting the same level. So this is the final point. But mm -hmm. uh, if we not saying that uh, we need to wait to the final point, the parents that use them always pressure to us that is when when we go to the lip repair, when we go to the lip repair, when we go to the lip repair. So we need to mm -hmm. know that this is we we need to say before that is uh, uh, we need to wait. If you do the name, we need to finish it. Mm -hmm. And the one that will tell me to do the surgery is orthodontist to do, to do the name. 
but we got the same endpoint, the dome and the alveolar process, uh, the alignment and the dome is a bit overcorrect comparing to the normal size. This is the answer. Okay, thank you very much. So you uh, decide the size for the goals, go to the surgery uh, uh, by yourself or you uh, discuss with the orthodontic doctor and you? For the yes, um, uh, uh, for, for the name, right? Or uh, for the, the, the. Yeah, for the, the, uh, uh, the finish the num num procedure. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, uh, we, we work together for a long time. So we used to talk a lot at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Now we not talk together that much as before because we understand in in, in the selected case, the orthodontist will call me or I call her mm -hmm. that is, okay, this case is too much pressure on the parents. So we need to uh to 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 finish the name and go to the surgery, even it's still not the time yet. Something like that. So we need to go to the 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 calling all the time. It's 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 like uh, we I have to respect the the orthodontist the orthodontist treatment because uh, it's so 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 time consuming, so burden for for them to develop just one name. Uh, they start with the part of plate and then go to the nasal pole, and if not finished. If not the finish yet, and we go to do the surgery next time, then they will not do the name for us. This okay. is my Thank answer. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Professor Handa. Uh, next coming panelist is the Professor Tin Chen Lu. Uh, Professor Lu, please. Hi. Hi, Professor. Thank you for your wonderful result. So I can see your beautiful lip contour and the lip sky is really good. Uh, I have only one question for you is, do you do the Tajima incision on the bilateral clap lip? First, uh, to be honest, it's not every case that good result. The slide, my side show only good result. But in some cases, uh, it's, it's not, as good as my slide because of some some cases got that uh, uh the, the deformity severity and many many things it cannot predict 100 percent for the final results uh the tajima yes i do the tajima because um uh to this is only way to go to the the nose to make the the the, the proportion of the uh, medial cruise of the lower lateral cartilage to get higher and get more tip definition. Uh, get 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 the uh, the the LR dome to free up the LR dome. So we need to get the tajima both sides and free up the LLC from the skin and reposition it. So, uh, it depends that uh, we will continue the the incision to the to the prolabium incision or not. Some cases I continue with. Some cases I think it's too risky because um, the prolabium is too small. I, I'm, I'm sorry, too long. So if we go to the, the continuous line, it may it can have some risk of um, necrosis of the prolabium. This is uh, very bad. So I most of the case I can I continue the the incision from the prolabium up to the uh, nose bilateral. So I, I see that uh, for the bilateral, you do like very, um, the tajima is not too much, right? I can see the, uh, it's quite, um, uh, hardly see the incision in your slides. Yes, yes. Uh, at at my early practice, I do not do the tajima because I concerned about the the viable prolabium. But in last five ten years, I changed my practice to to do more tajima numbers. Thank you very much. You're welcome. 
Yes, thank you, Professor Liu. And uh, the last one, I would like to invite Professor Low uh, to give the Professor Low's comment. Yes, Professor Low, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, hi, Dr. Shampong. It's uh, very nice to hear your talk and uh, uh, comprehensive uh, protocol in terms of timing and, and technique. I I I understand that uh still nowadays uh the timing and surgical technique for the repair still is controversial or different uh across the world and uh across the treatment team. Mm, I I would like to uh bring up uh just the pilot repair in the the timing uh because. I think uh, more and more surgeons now are doing early repair. Early repair, I mean, uh, before or, or slightly after one year of age. Uh, it's different from some uh, European group. There may be uh, still some uh, occasional group doing so-called late repair. Uh, so uh, in the early repair, we know that the speech function could be better. Uh, although people argue about the, uh, the delay uh, in growth, uh, maxillary growth. But I do not know uh, the difference between nine months, 12 months, or 18 months, this kind of timings. Uh, I, I use the timing uh, nine months uh, of age to do the repair because I feel that uh, if you do nine months and after three months, the healing is good, then the baby could have a good uh, tissue to begin the speech. So that, that, that's my belief. Uh, unless you have some concern, uh, patient have congenital heart disease, uh, developmental delay or airway issue that you could you know, do the repair later. So uh, I prefer to do it nine months. I still know some some doctor do 12 months or 15 months. Uh, I think there are some some uh, some uh, data support. If you do the repair before one year of age compared with after one year of age, they could still have some, uh, you know, uh, difference in terms of the speech function, meaning that nine months of age could have better speech function than 15 months of age. Uh, the, I, I think there's gradually have some data coming out uh, from the literature. So if you argue that, how about the, the development nine months 15 months, that really I do not know because uh, I only wish to have good speech result. And then when patient become adult, I can easily deal with the, the facial development. So Dr. Charampong, when you have, I need to listen, I need to hear your comment. And you, you, when, if you have a baby, uh, you choose the timing. What is the best timing? that you will choose because I see your time is quite long span between nine months to maybe 15 months. Thank you. This is this is another good question. Uh, when when I talk to the pediatricians, the baby doctor, the kid doctors, they always uh, tell me that uh, actually the speech, speech development of the kid, of the normal normal baby normal child is about 15 to 18 months of age not one year so i my timing is about one year of age because i think after i repair one one year of age it still have time for three months to get the scar softening and get the normal speech function at the development uh, milestone of the speech but uh, it's not only the 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 age that I concern. I always uh, have to do weight as well. The weight is not important much, but if one year of age the weight is below 
8.5 kilograms. If the kids born with the 3,000 grams or 3 kilograms, that may reflect some things that the kids have nutrition problems. So I always um, uh, use the, the age, the weight. And the other thing is follow the development. The five months old, the six months old, most of the kids will be able to sit stable. All right, the, the, the eight months old, nine months old, they will be able to crawl around. The 11 months old, 12 months old, they will be able to walk, uh, to, to stand up and start walk with holding some things. So this is, if the kids follow this milestone, we can expect they can develop the speech development at 15 year, uh, 15 months of age at earliest or 16 uh, or 18 months of age. So I think we have times and I do prefer to do at one year of age, not, be, not only because um, the development, but I think when I operate on the bigger kids, every time, ev everything is gets much easier. Nine months old and 12 months old is completely different. It's not like us. We, I'm 56 years old and next year I will be the same. And last three years ago, I will be the same. But the kids, for the kids, uh, the age of nine months, one or two months is completely different in terms of um, 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 uh, the easier to get cooperation and to find the, the, the good line of the IV to to uh, have the post of care. So, so many things, many things get easier. So I prefer to do at one year, one year of age. So I will, uh, but that's not only age, but also uh, looking for the, 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 the good weight to determine the how, how, need, how nut nutritional status they are and, and the development in, uh, other things, for example, to be able to sit, be able to crawl, be be able to to stand up. So that's just the whole thing. That's uh, will be uh, conclude. What is the time? That's uh, I prefer to do the surgery. So, but if uh, in, in average is about uh, twelve months of age. Okay, good. I think I think uh this kind of uh discussion now tonight we have a big group uh in the audience. I think that uh all the surgeon that you need to uh choose your timing, your technique when you feel most comfortable and you feel uh it is safer uh and and get better result for your patients. I know uh each individual surgeon, individual team. Uh, you you may have your con, uh, con, consideration when when you choose the uh, time and technique for your patient. So I think it's still uh, controversial. So I think it's all up to up to you guys that uh, uh, just 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 pray safe. I think this is the most important message. Thank you, Dr. Cherampo. And I yeah. I have a comment for the timing of the cleft palate repair that. Maybe several months ago, uh, there are, it did very well control study and is published on the NEJM New England Journal of Medicine. The timing of the cleft palate repair. One group is done by six months AG barrier and one group is well, uh, one year old. And the speech outcome is better in six months AG. So I was very, very impressed that that is very multi center. Uh, study and very, very many much population that, but I think that when I when we do repair cleft palate repair at six months AG, and uh, especially for the levator muscle dissection, uh, Professor Lo, is it uh, possible to dissect in that early AG group <laughs> for the yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that uh, I know the paper in New New England Journal of uh, Medicine. I actually, uh, Javier and I make comment in uh, to that paper. Uh, if you can check uh the an an EJM pay, uh, the paper, uh, I feel that six months and 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 later repair certainly, uh, you can get a better uh speech result. But 
Uh, I previously I did six month repair uh, in a uh, patient with only crab palate. Uh, but for the credit, because I repaired three months and then after six months of uh, uh, rest uh, development, nine months, and I do uh, the palate repair. I think to do a uh, palate repair at six months, nine months, 12 months, in terms of the tissue, I think it is the same. Very many years ago, I did a study uh, comparing the tissue uh, using the uh, dental uh, test uh, stone model to measure the volume. And I found that uh, before six months, the tissue is quite uh, uh, not enough, uh, a, wide, a wider crack. But after six months, uh, between uh, six months, nine months, 12 months, I think all the tissue uh, look the same. Uh, but again, I need to argue that uh, in your in your situation, if you feel six months, uh, your team can do the repair and patient uh, easy to take care, uh, and also uh, the I mean it's safe. I think you can certainly do it at six months and is uh, the same technique to dissect the flap to repair the muscle, and I I think it is the same. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you for all the panelists uh, to uh, come in and uh, suggestion with the Professor Charlon Pong. And now we are going to the QA session from our participants. Uh, the first one is the from uh, Dr. Steve. Steve said, thank you, Professor, for this great presentation. Uh, it looked like the use uh, if the name brings a better result. Yeah, so... What is your opinion, Professor Chalong Pong? Do you believe the name result is better in the aesthetics? Yeah, I think um, the name for unilateral and bilateral is different. The name for unilateral will make our surgeon easier to repair the cleft lip, but the, for the final results, maybe not different but we need to go, go to the study for 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 the name the final result of the name for the bilateral is this sure the name will bring the better result because the it can correct the some part that we cannot correct easily that means uh, columella to lengthen the columella and to align the the the, the premaxilla is very difficult for the cleft lip at the first repair. So the, the, the premaxilla in bilateral is always, almost all, always protrusion that makes uh, the, the, the repair very difficult and the scar will be very uh, high tension of the scar will make the, the scar not so good comparing to the less tension of the scar. So uh, the name for the unilateral in my opinion, is if you not use the name, it's okay. But for the name in bilateral, I think it's very helpful. Okay, thank you. Uh, the second question is from uh, Dr. Yo Ya. Uh, Professor, how do you compensate for the lack of lining tissue during the first deep repair? For example, the inferior turbinate flap or the other tissues. So what yeah. is your uh, yeah, opinion? Yeah. Uh, when we when when we release the the lateral part of the ELA from the pediform from the anterior maxilla, we will get the some space, some lack of of tissue in that area, in that area, some space because uh, the lateral the ELA base is float from the periform aperture. And if we have the something that 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 can replace at this area, it will be it if you make the our nose is getting better uh amount of tissue and get a better appearance, bigger nostril and uh contraction less less con contraction for the lateral part. So yes, I I, I I'm not doing for in the routine correction, but some sometimes I doing for for 
uh, replace the tissue at the lateral when I release the the ELA base from the piriform aperture. Okay, thank you, Professor. Uh, the next question is from uh, Dr. Sato. Uh, thank you, professors. And uh, do you have the choice to do the lipo injection to the pharyngeal wall and the sub palate to treat the VPI? And uh, what are your thoughts on the method a lipo injection for VPI? Yes, please. Yes, uh, I think it's, it's, uh, it can be used for the lipo injection. It can be used at the posterior pharyngeal wall because it can make the posterior phar pharyngeal wall getting closer to the v -lum. But uh, in my experience, lipo injection is not so impressive. So I stopped doing that. When I, when, when I inject at the posterior pharyngeal wall, it gets resorption. So it's not impressive for me. Maybe my technique is not good. So I stopped doing the, the lipo injection for the furniture wall. For the soft palate, I do not do the lipo section and uh, lipo injection in the soft palate. But sometimes we need we can uh, push push the 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 soft palate, the vlam back and using the fat from from the mucor uh, lateral buccal mucosa to fill up at the space between the soft and the hard palate. That's, mm -hmm. that's, okay. that's workable. Okay. And the final question is uh, from Dr. Uh, Somande. Uh, for the scar management and the concentration after the primary lip repair, uh, do you advocate for the mm -hmm. secondary uh, scar repair? Is there any other management that we can do uh, which not involve the surgery, like the deep stretching or oral myofunctional therapy or intralesional steroid injection? So what is your suggestions? Yeah. Yes. Um, this is always my problem. Uh, I cannot predict 100% of the lip scar, but I know that uh, if it's very tight, Tension very high, the lip scar always worse than the not tight, not uh, less tension of the lip scar. So uh, the lip scar is sometimes predictable, sometimes not predictable. But mostly, mostly, if possible, I will. Um, I think the the most important thing for me is the contouring. The contouring have to be good, have to be good before the scar itself. The contouring means the uh, if you can make the the, the 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 computer touch up to delete the scar, you have you you should see the very good proportion between the upper lip and the lower lip. That the upper lip is always you know forward more forward than the, the lower lip. So if you cut the lip scar and resuture, cut the lip scar and resuture it will be less upper lip tissue, less upper lip tissue. Sometimes in bilateral, we need to do the, the apnea wrap to get the better proportion to, to, to bring down the, the lower lip and, and add the volume of the upper lip to get the more proportion. If the proportion good, if the contour good, so we're concerned about the scar. The scar, it, it can be hypertrophic scar or red or, or, or depression or anything. So yes, uh, the, the the contour the, the contour is important than the scar and mm -hmm. i i do not do the the interlesional steroid injection in routine because it's very difficult to inject the steroid in the newborn in the baby less than you know 6 year 9 years old so but sometimes i do it like in sometimes in some cases hypertrophic scar on the upper part of the lip scar. And when I do the palate repair, I might inject a, a, a 0 0.1, 0 0.2 mm. mils of the steroid into Very the right. scar, into the scar. So if I have chance to do anything under GA, I may 
inject the steroid in the scar that get uh, that already hypertrophic. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we we just got a final questions from Doctor B S Quant. Uh, she has the two questions. The first one, uh, what is your opinion about a protocol platoplasty in two stage? Uh, because of the incision laterally, and that probably will prevent. How how could you to prevent the hypo maxillary, maybe the scar contraction for the maxillary development? This is the first question. The second question is: Do we have to reposition the muscle palate uh, when we do the veloplasty, like the Somanen technique? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, the first question is still controversial, I think, because um, in in the, the in the area that the country that is very um sophisticated in orthodontic or orthodontic treatment, yeah. uh, they're not scared of of the maxilla hypoplasia. So it's like, but in in Europe, in Europe, Oslo. Uh, Norway or in that area, they prefer to do two stages of the of the palatoplasty because they are concerned about the 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 growth of the maxilla rather than the speech. So they can correct the speech, but they will be they feel difficult to correct the the jaw growth discrepancy. So they prefer to do the two stages. So my my opinion my opinion is I try I try to do one stage for the palate repair in every case except except it's very wide it's very wide wide cleft palate is is always happen in bilateral bilateral cleft palate I will do do the soft palate repair first when I do the soft palate repair and next year next next one year. Next two years, when I do the hard pad repair, it will be much much easier. It will be very small, very small, very small gap of the hard palate. so much easier. So I do have experience that have two steps, but it's not my routine. My routine is to do one step, and if the the tissue is not enough, I I, I make my revision to be the second stage, second stage by doing the furrow, C plasty, or anything. So my routine, I do one stage. Mm -hmm. Ex in, in, only in exceptional cases, that's very wide. I will do the soft palate first and do the hard palate. And the second okay. question is, do we have to reposition? I, I believe that. I believe so. I I think that, that uh, we need to not only join the muscle, but we need to get the the vector of the muscle as horizontal as possible and as posterior as possible because with that position in and with that alignment it will be the muscle will pull the velum effectively to cross to the posterior pharyngeal wall. So that's okay. the same thing. If we do the furrow protoplasty, the muscle it will include in the posterior fat both sides. So the muscle part, it will push to the post, the most posterior anyway of the villum, anyway, because it's included into the, the posterior flap, the posterior triangle flap, both sides, uh, yes. nasal side and the oral side. So it will be overlapping and pushing into the posterior part. So I think it's important. Position the muscle into the post, the most posterior and the horizontal vector. So that's that's the the hidden the hidden purpose of the of the furlough, not only the, the six sac incision that less contraction. Okay. Yeah, very thank you, professors. They were very clearly uh, explanation for all those uh, questions and a very nice answer for layer demand. Uh Actually, I really appreciate the Professor Cholongpong to give us the Thailand's the experience to follow the clap care. Today is that we highlight the lip repair and uh, we know the importance of the name 
uh, in different category of UCLP and the BCLP and how they impact on those two different groups, as well as the palatoplasty, alveolar bone graft, uh, especially we still have a very clear protocol of the care of the patients that before the older bone maturing, different stage and different surgical method, very similar to uh, with the different protocol in different countries. But I think we have the same idea, lip repair first, the part of, and the bone, and the maybe jaw surgery and the rhinoplasty. Uh, we still have a lot of controversial uh, problem, and uh, that's what is the most interesting. We have to every day to pursue the best uh, solution for these uh, problems. So it's time always. I hope that all our participants to open your screen and uh, for the group photo time. And uh, good morning and good evening. Uh, no matter it's dark time or sunny times, uh, thank you so much. We can join together to learn from Professor Chuan Long Pong. And uh, besides, uh, especially to thank today, we have uh, three very important panelists. The one is the Professor Tasu Hock from Asa Medical Center. Yes, thank you. The second one is the Professor Takuyaki Panda from uh, Japan. And the Professor Tin Chen Lu, yeah, we are all, our always the uh, member in Chang'an faculties. Okay, and I will count to three and the priests show you a big smile to, to me. <laughs> okay, one, two, cheese. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Professor Chang Bong again. And uh, two weeks later, in May and Phoebs, Professor Lin Dei Hui from the Malaysia will give us the topic. Uh, very much the similar is the CLAP uh, care for those the patients. Um, hope to see you, Lin, and uh, hope to you have a good one, and hope you have a good day. Thank you very much for your come join. See you two weeks in two weeks. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Charon Bom. Bye bye. Thank you, Easy. Hi, Doctor O. Is your kids? Hi. Nice to see you. Okay. Thank you, Easy. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you, EK. Bye-bye. Yes. <laughs>